All right, so we finished our brazing process last night. Put a dry nitrogen charge in the blind set for the duration of the evening last night. A little over an hour and a half ago, we started our evacuation process. You can see our vacuum pump down below here. Our manifold set here. And we're pulling this system into a deep vacuum, which is critical when you're dealing with R410A on any R410A system. Again, the things you do with R22, you won't get away with with 410, so do it right or stay home. One of the key components when you're doing an evacuated system is a digital vacuum gauge. Don't rely on your manifolds. Use a digital vacuum gauge. We went at least 500 microns. This system has been pulled down to 47. We're well below the 500 micron threshold that we would like to see as a minimum. Once you're satisfied with your evacuation process, you'll want to isolate the system, again, keeping the digital vacuum gauge so that it has the ability to measure your deep vacuum. Shut the pump off and watch it for a bit, probably 10, 15 minutes to see if there is much of a change. There's typically always going to be a change, but you don't want to see over maybe about 300 PSI, excuse me, uh, microns uh, change in any kind of drift. Okay? If you're satisfied with your vacuum, it's holding. Your next step is going to be opening up the refrigerant valves to release the charge that is, comes with these units. Again, you want to make sure that you're using the right tools. You're going to need an Allen wrench to open up these valves. You're going to need a tool to remove the brass cap. So remove the brass cap, open the valve all the way until it's fully back seated, until it stops. Put that cap back on and crank it down a little bit. Don't mondo torque it, but snug it up pretty well. Now that we're satisfied with the amount of drift that we saw in our deep vacuum, now it's time to release the contained refrigerant charge into the system. We're going to remove the brass service valve caps. Take our Allen wrench and release the refrigerant. Continue to open the valve till it fully back seats. You can no longer open it any further. Again, always replace the cap. Fully open. And we just snug those caps up. Again, you don't want to lean on your wrench and break your valve loose or crack the valve cap. Now you're ready to go to the next step, which will be to weigh in your charge if you need more refrigerant. We got a couple uh, outdoor split units here. And we actually have a uh, two-ton system here and a three-ton system here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the flushing procedures for these uh, two units. They're actually tied to a common loop. We'll talk a little more about that here in just a moment. But a couple things I want to point out. Uh, in the back of this outdoor split, uh, we don't have a conventional flow center, but we have all the valves necessary uh, to, flow, uh, to flush out the system properly. And I want to talk a little bit about those. First thing, we got our flush cart here, connections hooked up. We must connect this up in, a pro in the uh, proper order. We got our supply side here, and it must be connected in the direction of flow 
through this outdoor split. Our outdoor splits, the Grand Falls pumps, have a built-in check valve in the direction of the flow. In this machine here, we have just one pump, and the water is going to flow through, pump through here and into the coaxial heat exchanger, and then back out through this side is our return side. So it's very important that we hook our supply side from our flush cart into this port and not backwards or we'll be going against the check valve. Uh, another thing to point out, uh, there is a shutoff valve at the base of this pump. At this time here it is shut off. So initially we will be filling the loop with our household water pressure through this braided hose down into our inch and a quarter polyethylene tube here that is feeding our loop. The water then will come back from the loop field on our return side through this braided hose, back through here, and then out through the return side and back into the flush cart tank. And again, refer to our flushing procedures video for more details actually on the flushing procedures. Now, with this um, two unit setup here, it's a little critical on how you actually flush this. Initially, again, we're going to fill the system with the household water pressure of our garden hose. Again, water in through our supply side. It's going to come back out our return side. As we start getting water back into the reservoir of our flush cart tank, we will come over to our second unit here that is not, our hoses are not attached to. Again, it's been teed down in the ground. Our supply and our return lines are teed inch and a quarter from our header, from our uh, loop field out here. Over here, again, where we would connect our flush ports on this second unit, we will uh, burp the system. So now we are actually just filling this with household pressure as the water, we wanna make sure, again, from our T connection here, we're gonna have some air in there. If we just flush this side, and don't touch this side, we're gonna have an air pocket in here we're gonna have, have a problem with. So what we're gonna do is actually crack this valve open and get that uh, air, that entrapped air out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, starting with the supply side. Again, getting that air out of this line coming up here uh, from the supply side, feeding the pump. So I'm gonna get the air out of this line right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack this open. Again, getting that air out of there. Now, I will now do the return side. Again, the same thing. Again, until we get all that, that entrapped air out of there. Now, I've also noticed I've kept the valve shut off here going to our coaxial heat exchanger. I just want to get this loop initially, um, all that air out of that system. Once uh, we've got the air out. Again, we're just using the household water pressure. We will go back to our flushing procedures now and start the pump and work all that air out of the loop as you see in the flushing procedures video. Once we've done that, we've got the loop all flushed. We will now move to flushing uh, water through the coaxial heat exchangers. We will start with this unit here, opening this bottom valve below the pump. We are now flowing through the coaxial heat exchanger. Again, following the flushing procedures, we will work all the air out of that loop there. Once we got that, uh, we feel we've got that flushed, we will move here to our second unit. And again, we will shut the loop side off and then open up the side feeding the coaxial heat exchanger. So now we are forcing water through the whole system back to this point here. Once we've got that flushed, we can open this up and we're flushing through both the loop and both units. And again, we will follow our uh, flushing procedures. Again, watching for no more than about a 3 eighths of an inch drop in our reservoir to get all that entrapped air out of this uh, loop and the units. Once we've done that, we've worked all that air out, then we can go ahead and again, pressurize uh, this system and put it into operation. Or if, 
Again, being outdoor splits, we will also be adding antifreeze in it. And again, refer to our flushing procedures video for uh, how to do that. A couple other uh, key points here to note on our outdoor splits here and flushing uh, these units. Again, in this case here, as you can see, I'm standing between these two units. I got my hands on them. They're relatively close together. There may be uh, cases where you've got them further apart or possibly even another unit inside the house tied to this common loop. Uh, at that case there, you're gonna probably have to remove the flush cart from this unit and move it to that second unit in order to properly flush that out. And again, uh, anytime there's any questions, reach out to your distributor and your anybody, uh, a technical advisor from that distributor in order to help you in that uh, process.